Hey, and welcome to uh, an edition of Mr. Z on TV. This will probably eventually make it to my YouTube channel, but uh, we're doing a screencast on a software called Explain Everything, and we're going to be talking about homemade indicators. An indicator is a chemical that allows us to see a change in some other chemicals, and in this particular case, we're looking at acids and bases, so then we're also going to be talking about pH. So as an acid or a base interact with each other, we're, we can describe their pH. So let's get right into it. The indicators that we're going to use today are going to be homemade. We're actually going to look at one. It, the one that we are going to look at is, let's see, we're going to look at red cabbage. You can see a slice of red cabbage in front of you. And because of that deep red color, if you boil it, and you can see here, is a, is a pot here, and in that pot, so right here, you can see that, in that pot there is some red cabbage. After it's been boiled down, and you can see right down that way, that the juice is being strained off. And they strain that off into a beaker. That beaker then, of, well you could if you don't have a beaker at home, just pour it into a bowl. And then what you see in there, as far as paper, could be filter paper, it could be uh, coffee filters work quite well, so if you soak some coffee filters in it, then you're going to take them out and you're going to let them dry. So as they're kind of sitting on the countertop, or or you might want to keep that stuff will stain, so you might want to keep it away, then that part right there is going to be a, a lightly stained coffee filter that we can then use to test things at home. So that indicator, I'll show you what happens with it in just a second, is going to change color when we add things to it. Okay, so here's our paper again. And now we add, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can put it in little paper cups, as uh, these students did. And they have each cup labeled or what they tested. And you can see that the colors have changed. And that's because an indicator, here's another example in a beaker, will change its color based on the pH of what's in it. So if we test things like vinegar or cleaning solutions, they're going to indicate that there's different types of chemicals in there. Now, this is the more commercially available one that you may or may not have tried. Uh, this is Hydreon paper, and if you take a look at the Hydreon paper, right here you can see pH. But then if you look real carefully, you can also see the prefix hyde, like hydrogen, and then the word ion. So it's really using a a combination here. We're testing the pH. We're we're taking a look at so there goes the pH part. You can see that. We're looking at hydrogen and then we're also looking at ions. Okay? So pH, this paper, will change color based on all of these different types of chemicals. So if we're having a really strong acid would be here at zero, moving our way up to seven. So 7 is what we call neutral. You can see that's green. And then the scale actually goes beyond 13, but right here at 13, we have our bases. Really strong ones, too. So let's see if we have... All right, I think that's our last one. Now, on this slide, you see a picture of the pH scale. This is very, very simple, except for one word on here that some of you may or may not be familiar with. And that word is the word alkaline. So something that's alkaline is the same word as something that's basic. Now the word base means that it has hydroxide ions and acid means that it has hydrogen ions. But you can see that acids appear from the number 7 to the left and alkaline or bases appear from the number 7 to the right. So the word neutral is what we describe anything that is exactly 7. So 7 on the pH scale, you can see, is in the middle, and that's why it's neutral. Now the next thing we'll take a look at is another example, pretty simplistic, and this just has our acid and base ions. So when it says low pH, okay, has low pH, has lots of H plus ions, that's hydrogen ions, then we're talking zero, and the closer we get to this line, which represents 7 or neutral, we have pretty much a balance between the two. On this side, we can see all these hydroxide ions. Notice they're negative, and that's going to give us a high pH. Those are bases. 
Because these guys are opposites, you can see the OH minus and the H plus, because they're opposites, they, uh, they can attract each other. And when they do that, that becomes neutral. Uh, I'm going to scale this guy down just a little bit so you can see the whole thing. And all these images, by the way, I just got from Google Image Search, so I'm not uh, stealing them or making any money off them. You can find them yourself. Just go to Google and type in pH uh, and uh, check the images. So here's an example of a pH scale. You can see the number 7 is Rodea in the middle. That's pure water. That's going to be a combination of H and OH. But then as we go back towards 0, we're dealing with stronger and stronger acids. You'll notice some of these are foods. So food items can be acidic, but not a big deal for us until we get down here. Battery acid's not really a food. And uh, so that's a very strong acid as we get towards zero. Bases, you'll notice pure, mil uh, pure water and uh, milk. Well, milk is in there, but then baking soda. You can brush your teeth with that or take it if you've got an upset stomach. Milk of magnesia, same thing. Okay, now we're getting into some more dangerous things. So ammonia, soapy water, bleach, oven cleaner, uh, those are things that are very, very strong bases. So this would be another example of the pH scale. As you can see, acidity increases as you go away from 7, and so does alkalinity, which just means base. Okay, so those are some very simple things on the pH scale, and I hope you learned, and you can try out, if I go, you can try out your your cabbage, red cabbage, or any other dark red vegetable. Uh, maybe even try it out with uh, dark grape juice. Maybe that'll work. So give it a shot. Test some things at home on your little piece of coffee filter and see if you can figure out where their pH is.